Hi, welcome back to the Uber Tablet Blog. My name's Hugo Ortega. Now I've prepared something pretty special, I, I think anyway, in the effort to keep Ultramobile PC and the, the, the existing technology a little bit realistic. I wanted to give you an idea of where we've come from to get to the point we are today and where we're actually going. Um, it, it's quite exciting to be involved in, in Ultramobile PC and Tablet PC, so I thank you for for viewing, I thank you for being part of my life. Um, so I've prepared something I think that's a little bit unique to uh, give you an understanding of what's happening. Now obviously this is not a 12 inch Ultramobile PC, although if you look at this it's, it's quite, uh, uh, quite unique. <laughs> I'm actually using dial keys uh, on a 12 inch resistive touch screen. Now um, the point of this exercise is not that, um, but I'll get into this shortly. Let's have a look at where technology has come from today. I think that's pretty key to understand where it's going. So one thing I wanted to talk about today was a motherboard or a main board as you like to call them in the United States. The main board itself, um, this is from a desktop, it's a, what's called a micro ATX form factor and it has obviously all the room for all the components that were needed to run a desktop. Um, you've got the system fan, this big old thing there, uh, spins nicely. Um, you've got the CPU embedded down there, you've got a nice couple of gigs of RAM locked away in, in the, uh, on the actual motherboard. You've got expansion slots and ports. Now this is a micro ATX. ATX was actually a bigger form factor than this by about another two inches. So this is a micro ATX that went into a desktop. Let's take a look at a tablet PC motherboard. Now the tablet PC motherboard looks like this. Now it, it usually gets cut into a funny shape. Why? Because it has to fit in a much more unique environment. Um, you can see the PCB has a nice little um, half an inch or, or even quarter inch um, space there. Um, to, to keep information and circuitry coming down the side of the, uh, the case. Um, it is, it is uh, a 12-inch tablet PC, um, and, and that was, was what we relied on to make us mobile. So it replaced the original motherboard stuck inside a desktop um, and made the whole form factor smaller with the same amount of information. Now what we have today is an ultra-mobile PC motherboard. Now Ultramobile PC motherboards are even smaller again. This one even has a, a CPU and fan still attached to it, so that's what it actually looks like. There's your slot for your hard drive. There's a touch controller. There's a, um, a Wi-Fi slot. There's RAM and so on. So if you look at where we've come from, the, the existing technology is growing so rapidly that manufacturers are having to compete with this, this, and this on the same platform. So it's no wonder that Ultramobile PC still isn't at the haiku stage that we were all expecting it to be this time this year. Um, it takes a while for manufacturers, research and development to, to make this any smaller, lighter, faster, quicker, uh, not as hot. Um, so all these sort of things take time. Let's look at RAM, another example. RAM's interesting. So here's your standard desktop RAM. Obviously, probably the, the, uh, the size of someone's palm of someone's hand almost. Um, then you've got DDR2 SO DIMMs, which fit inside a uh, regular no uh, notebook or, or a mobile PC. And they fit inside most ultra mobile PCs. But here's what's interesting again uh, in RAM developments, Fujitsu has released a, a micro DIMM, and this is the actual DIMM that goes inside a Fujitsu P1610. Um, so I thought it was worth showing you because most of you would not have seen this. There is a, a mini DIMM or micro DIMM that goes, it's still DDR2, but it's what fits inside a, uh, a Fujitsu P1610. There's the DDR2 that fits inside an ultra mobile PC. And right next to it is the, the RAM that fits inside a, a regular desktop. Unbelievable. So we're really growing at rapid paces here. And uh, you know, not to cover it off too much, but so are hard drives. There's a standard 2.5 inch hard drive. There's, there's sorry, 3.5 inch hard drive that goes into a, a regular desktop. 
there's a uh, 2.5 inch that goes inside a notebook, and then there's a 1.8 inch that's even smaller again. Now, what I wanted to cover off today, more importantly than anything else, was touch screen technology. Now, right now we've got four wire resistive touch technology sitting inside an ultra mobile PC, and yet most of you and, and, and most of us wouldn't understand what that actually means. Four wire relates to the connector that connects the actual touch screen to the touch controller. There's four wires channeling information back to the motherboard. You've got four, six, and eight wire. There's a five wire, but I'll cover that off in a second. Four, six, and eight wire technology are the bottom end of the, of the technology run. They transfer information slowly, and they have a life cycle of about a million touches, um, uh, and then they start to die. Um, so, you know, if all of you that are favoring touch right now, stay tuned. Five wire resistive touch has sort of a 35 million touch life cycle. Um, the fifth wire, uh, the unpaired wire, so four, six, and eight are obviously paired wires. Um, the, the fifth wire on a five wire resistive touch is the highest quality touch you can get. The fifth wire translates information um, differently. Let's just put it that way. Um, and, it, and it extends the life cycle of a touch screen. Now the way touch screens work, a film sits on top of the actual screen or underneath, uh, no, on top of the actual screen um, that, that translates your image, so the LCD or the backlit LED display. That film sits, hovers over the actual display. Now what happens is until you press the screen against the, the second screen, so the top film against the underneath screen, no electricity is conducted. So therefore, by pressing, you're actually conducting electricity and you're letting those four wires, six wires or eight wires know that an XY coordinate has been created on the screen. This is why multi-touch is so tricky, because multi-touch would, would have to compute multiple touches at the same time, which obviously need bigger processors, more touch controllers and so on. But for the sake of this argument, just know that until you press, no electricity is conducted between the two forms, so no, no, nothing knows that you've touched it. Now, where is touchscreen technology going? What I've got here is a ELO, it's called, um, ELO, um, uh, resistive touch screen. Um, now, the, the, this is actually a, a, um, a surface wave technology touch screen. It's not resistive, it's not um, touch in, in traditional sensors. It's based on sound waves crossing the back of this touch screen. Now until I hit it and make a sound, the cursor does not move. Now these are massive benefits. I'll tell you one of the biggest benefits. The biggest benefit is the, the life cycle of this touch screen. You've got 35 million touches roughly. The second thing is that even if I touch this very hard or I scratch the screen or even break the screen, the sound film is not broken. So with a scratch, this will still operate. Whereas your traditional UMPC, um, when they get scratched, they actually do not operate as well and start to deteriorate quite rapidly. So you can see that the added benefits of a sonic touch type touch screen are massive. Now if we call up for something, something like a program launcher, the, the response rate is actually much faster too. Um, and I can close things as I would normally. But what's interesting is that I can actually write also. Um, so I can say Hugo Ortega. Now the, uh, the, the, the quality of writing, I don't know if you can see that there, is probably much the same of that of a, of a, t a poor quality touchscreen um, UMPC. So it's not great. But I can actually call up the tablet input panel. Um, let's do that now. And say Hugo or Tega. So I didn't get that. And let's just zoom in there and see if you can see that. So, no matter how messy it was, it actually got Hugo, um, but it didn't get Ortega. But obviously, uh, I wouldn't expect it to. So I guess where I'm trying to get to with this is to give you an understanding that. Touch technology is also developing. Keep your eye out for um, uh, laser touch, um, sonic touch, um, touch that involves um, uh, uh, visual elements as well as uh, so horizontal elements so we can interact in the sky. Um, these are all the things that we've got the pleasure of dealing with and looking forward to in the future. 
So this has been Hugo Ortega wanting, you to, wanting to give you a glimpse at the future and, uh, and look forward to dealing with you and talking to you on the blog again. Till next time, bye bye.